Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. And I'm Luca Mignogna. And I'm Cristina Barbieri. Today on Ciao Italia, Burata! Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Welcome to Italy, and let's cook real Italian. Aren't they gorgeous? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. I'm in heaven. Think about how healthy this is. That's for you. Sunday sauce. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. You want a Goldilocks dough, just right. Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? Obviously, you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? I mean, I'm a cook. Why can't I try it? You're the best. No, you're the best. Want to learn how a real farm works? Visit Appleton Farms in Ipswich, Massachusetts, the oldest working farm in America. Want great artisanal cheese? Start with fresh milk. Master cheesemaker Luca Mignoni is doing just that. It's, you know, Marianne, this is the, one of the oldest um, farms in, uh, in the United States, in Massachusetts for sure. Since 1636, they've been doing like practice of sustainable because we have higher percent of butter fat yeah that it works way much better for the uh, dry cheeses that we produce at Wolf Meadow. So like for the um, a provolone or the scamorza cacio cavallo. Or cacio cavallo. Esatto. Okay. Perfetto. So yeah. And uh, and the butter I think he likes me. And the butter <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they are they are they're really beautiful. Yeah. And the and butter fat, it's helping the, the sharpening of the cheeses. Uh -huh. It helps the aging because yeah. the, higher, the higher protein in the, in the cheese takes longer to age. So, so the cows are going to spend the rest of the day here <laughs> eating. They're going, to enjoy, they're going to enjoy breakfast right now uh -huh. and uh, just, you know, relax, rest, and uh, get ready for the next milking. Okay, while they're relaxing, we have to go make cheese. Yes. No relaxing for no us. No relaxation for us. Let's so, go make some cheese. All right, let's make right. some cheese. Next stop, Wolf Meadow Farm, a Casa Ficho and retail store in Amesbury, Massachusetts, where Luca creates his Molisan style artisanal cheeses. And his business partner, Christina Barbieri, sells them to lucky customers. When you enter their store, you may as well be in Luca's hometown in Campo Basso, Italy. Luca, we have to tell everyone how you get from the milk that the Jersey cows gave us to these curds. Well, we took the milk this morning from the dairy and we went through the pasteurization process. And uh, when we got the right time, we did add the enzymes. The enzymes are actually helping the milk to raise the pH and have a higher, you know, acidic flavor. Will also be responsible the enzyme for the stretching process of the curd. Right. And through, after a couple of uh, different steps of raising and lower the temp of the whey, we have the curds, they are fermented enough in a single block to be stretched. Okay. And it comes with years of experience to know exactly when the time is right to stretch the curds, right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you've Let's done this a correct, long time. Correct. Okay. The, 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 each, the point is that we only have a little tiny window. To do it. To do it. So oh. we need to be ready at the right time when the okay. curds are ready on the maximum stretchability. Okay. Right. So we can have the best in terms of flavor, in terms of texture, and... Okay. How did you learn to make cheese? Well, uh, you know, in my own area, um, in, in Molise, cheese, it's like, um, for New England, make maple syrup. You okay, know, everybody right, yeah. has everybody a makes very cheese. rural, very agricultural area. Mm -hmm. And um, um, basically, it's the place where, for hundreds of years, shepherds have been bringing goats, cow, and, 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 and sheep over the high pasture. Yeah. So we were down the valley and collecting milk for hundreds over here and that's, making that's cheese. That's the uh, transhumans. The transhumans. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. When oh, you yeah. reach the high pasture during the summer right. time. And they bring the, the uh, animals down to different pasturing areas. So that changes the flavor, doesn't it? Does it does change the flavor. It doesn't change the viscosity of the milk. Uh -huh. And of course, it does give you more or less butterfat based on the time of the year that we're in. Mm -hmm. We're gonna start to make 
two things. We're going to do the mozzarella, okay. and also we're going to start to prepare the stracciatella, which is the, the um, strings of mozzarella fused with the cream. They are going to be stuffed into the burrata Into cheese. the burrata, and that's what the difference is between mozzarella and burrata, right? Correct. The burrata is technically a stuffed cheese mm -hmm. with cream and... And the stracciatella and the inside. Stracciatella. Correct. Oh, and we'll I'm show we'll see all the <laughs> okay. we'll see the whole process together. Um, first, we need to get some mozzarella, and that's what we're gonna uh, do together in the next couple of minutes. Okay. And it's really separating those curds somewhat, aren't they? Isn't they, it? They still are because they are yeah. warming up. Yeah. And, but you see they start to get a little, yeah. the little filaments mm -hmm. and the little stretching. Mm -hmm. so you'll see in a, in a second how beautifully they get together. No preservatives. Nope. No coloring. No coloring. No just additives. Fresh just fresh milk. Just fresh milk from those Jersey cows. Okay. Now we'll play with a little bit on, mm -hmm. on the hands just to make what we call the nice face and mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And you, you're not, you're just eyeballing what the size of these are going to be. Yes. So each one is a little different. It's, they're all yeah. different. Uh -huh. They all stay into a range of half pound, uh -huh. Um, you know, 60s, something yeah, like that, yeah. three quarters. God, it's like a big sheet of pasta. Correct. Correct. Ooh. Look at how pliable that is. Wow. That was, that was milk, liquid milk. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very stretchy. Who needs spandex? And you got... Huh? Who needs spandex? You got this. <laughs> Beautiful. The mozzarella there will be break down in strings that is gonna go stuffing your burrata. There we go. So the idea of putting this these shards if you, of cheese inside the burrata. Where does that come from? Well, um, there is a gossip. A little bit of <laughs> gossip? A little bit of I'm gossip. all for that. Okay. <laughs> it's actually, um, it's the, the origin of the burrata is the way that some of those Mastri Casari figured it out in order to save some of the leftover. Oh. Because as we were saying earlier, whatever we're producing in the morning, we'll enjoy in the afternoon or in the evening. Mm -hmm. The leftover get Re-processed um, uh, with some fresh cream, and the very next day it gets stuffed into fresh burrata. So somebody came up with that idea of putting that into. So isn't and that's probably where the name comes from, right? It's, burrata mean, burro means butter. Uh, means butter. butter, creamy, and cream is a product of of milk and butter. Correct. So is that where that came from? Well, the idea of butter is also and the creamy, and the yeah. cream is also to give some uh, to the curds a little bit of durability uh -huh. and the cream is a natural preservative mm -hmm. as the butter mm -hmm. burrata, burrata that's where it comes okay. from okay yeah okay mm. so i'm gonna just put this back away yeah. also if we use curds they are too fresh and they are not infused the cream stays too liquid, okay. so as soon you yes, kind of yes, moves yes. all the way yes. out. Yes, too watery, see how, huh? See how it more firm. Yeah, that's it, yeah. yes, and they've coated the uh, stracciatelle, so it's 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 coated well. Correct. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now, I'm creating a little disc. Uh huh. Uh, it's like a little pizza dough. Yeah. It's nice and stretchable. It's nice and shiny on the outside. Uh -huh. Father did a great job uh -huh. on the stretching. So we're gonna be. Oh, you put it in a little uh, cheese mold. Yes, because yeah. it will help when we stuff it. Mm -hmm. It will keep it together. Mm -hmm. 
You know, burrata has become very popular the last few years. It is. You know, maybe five, six years ago, nobody ate burrata. Now, it's a very popular cheese. Now you're tying it. Yes, yeah. now I'm tying it like, because we don't stuff with any machine. We'll just tie it. And then cut it. And cut it. So oh. we're going to take a little neck. Put it in the water. Then how long does it stay in the water? Like, no, not very long. What we're okay. going to do right now is this. And I know exactly what I'm going to do with those. All right. I've got three great recipes in mind. Wait till you see what I'm going to do. <laughs> Look at how beautiful this is. These are the finished burrata, tre burrate. And with me to make the first recipe using burrata is Christina. Hi. And Christina is Luca's lifelong partner in this business. And also, I guess you could say his lifelong love, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you love making cheese just as much as he does. Yes, I love enjoying it probably All right. a more. <laughs> well, here's what I always say about burrata. Don't mess with something that's perfect. I agree. Are you agree? Completely. Okay, so I'm going to make, with your help, a nice salad. Now, this is really a meal all by itself because you have your protein, you have all of your vegetables. So I'm going to start by making a dressing. So why don't you cut that lemon that's for it. me? So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil right in the salad bowl. We want to make sure we're using a good extra virgin olive oil. And some salt, un po' di sale and then just a squeeze of the lemon sure. juice in there. Even if we get the pits in there, it's okay. You know, it's a natural food. And you just want to kind of mix that up. So I, add, I think I need a little bit more of the lemon juice. Sure. I like the lemon with this because the burrata is so, it's so creamy and it's so delicate that I really don't want to make it too pungent with adding a, a vinegar to it. So I think the lemon juice is better. So you really make a little emulsion. Give this a little bit more olive oil. We're using extra virgin and a little bit more of the lemon. In fact, don't be shy with the lemon. Squeeze the whole thing in there because we've got a lot of ingredients that are going in here and the other half as well. And now it's just a matter of adding ingredients that you like. I mean, when you make an insalata, it's whatever you happen to have, but make sure it's really fresh. So I like a radicchio. So we're gonna Me put too. some of that in and then some romaine. I like to use the hearts of romaine because it's nice and crispy. That yeah, adds that crunch. Yeah. And a little arugula. That gives you a little bite. Now this That's is going to nice. be enough for four people. And then the peas. Sure. Put those in. And here's the trick. I don't even cook them. I just put them in fresh, raw, or if you're going to use frozen peas, just let them defrost and put them in. They're already cooked. And the sugar snaps. As is. Beautiful. And the red pepper. Some chocolate. And then I'm going to have you just toss that gently. Sure. Just toss that gently. I'm going to get a plate here. And what we're going to do is plate all of the salad greens. And then we're going to put the burrata on top of it. So then it can be cut. It can be... It can be divvied up among people, or you can eat the whole thing. You said, you know, una borata per una persona, right? In fact, and I In think fact, the beauty of the borata is that when you cut it, it gives that nice effect of yes. coming out. So you do want, you know, all of the beautiful mozzarella that you have inside and the cream. You really want to see that. And so we're going to see that. I'm going to have you cut one as soon as I play a little bit of everything that we have in this bowl. So this, I think, makes a really nice presentation because you have all of your vegetables ready to go and a complete meal because and a complete meal and this is a great thing to do in the summertime or anytime you can eat burrata all year long so that's that and then christina pick one. Oh, okay let's see i think i'm gonna go for this one okay take that one all right and you still have to take the string off right in fact well okay we can or cut it with the string on okay yeah we can cut it with the string on okay We'll put it right on top in this one, like that. Beautiful. Look at how pretty I that know. is. I know. This so one's so fresh. Sit. Okay. And now we're going to cut it. Beautiful latticello. Okay. So maybe we should use the cheese knife for this. Sounds fabulous. I'll let you do the honor since you are the queen of burrata. Well, we'll take this off then. Might as well. And I like to cut in half, but you can you do... You do it however you like to okay. do it. Okay. So we'll start at the top. 
And then just delicately, I think it's really and important. And important to use a cheese knife because yes. the cheese knife doesn't tear into the cheese. It cuts no. it delicately. And now, oh, mm. here we are. You can just leave it to, yeah, that's the best part. But we're not done because now we want a little bit of prosciutto di palma over the top. And you just crisp these up? Yeah, in a frying pan. Mm. A little bit of black pepper. Wow. And... Un scotcho di olio di oliva. It's really nice. Insalate per uno. Per uno. <laughs> you know that every summer people just die for insalata caprese, right? I do. Right. <laughs> and it has the colors of the Italian flag. So we've got tomatoes, we've got basil, and we have mozzarella. Of course. But in this case, we have burrata. So I came up with a different way. Instead of stacking, you know, the cheese mm -hmm. between the uh, slices of tomato, I thought this was a better way to handle the burrata. So first of all, you get yourself some beautiful summer tomatoes. Beef steak is best for this. And just mm -hmm. take off the top. So why don't you take the top off of that one? Right. And if it doesn't stand just exactly straight, you can take a little bit off the bottom so it's not ah. rocking anywhere. Okay. Then... You go around the inside wall of the tomato, okay. but, but leave, you know, leave a good solid wall behind you because we're going to take out this center core. Okay. And people always say to me, well, what do you do with that? You're going to throw it away? No, you can save it and use it the next day in something in else. So you take that out and put it there. And then usually what I do is just squeeze the tomato a little bit just to get the excess juice out. All right. Then... This is where the basil part comes in. My favorite. Yeah, I decided that a pesto is perfect for this. So here we have a pesto sauce that I made last year, believe it or not. Look at the color of that. Wow. You don't need too much because it's pretty intense. So, so far so good. So now what we need to do is take one of these beautiful borate and we're going to cut that in half because okay. we want to fit it cut side up Ooh. in the tomato. Okay. So, and that's a pretty big one. So it, is. it may be, you know, bigger than we need, but we'll see when we cut it. Okay. So we're going to cut that in half. All right. Just like that. And like we say, very delicately. Oh, look at all of that beautiful cream. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Look at how gorgeous that is. Uh -oh. And then I take it, and it is a little big for this. Yeah, I think we should probably, it is a little large. However, you know what? I think we should take a little bit off. Sure. If you can cut just a little more. We'll of eat course. that separately. I'll cut here? Yeah, cut, cut it this way so that we can fit it into you the tomato. Got it. That we eat separately. I can't wait. There's always a way around cooking in the kitchen. See, because that fits so much nicer. A drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Mm. This is my idea for a caprese salad. And then you can take a fresh basil leaf. Here, here's one for you. Grazie. Put it over the top or maybe one or two. Here's another one. Because you're going to eat this with a fork and a knife. And then you put your, put your top back on. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Save the tops. Oh, beautiful. Put your top back on. Whoops. A little package of goodness. You put, wow. Put that on a plate. Give it a little bit of. Thank you. Put, a oh. little, put some pine nuts around. Well, and this is really the homage to Italy because you have all of the fresh ingredients the fresh basil, the fresh pesto, the fresh burrata. But it's simple. And there you have it it's Beautiful. burrata, caprese style. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>
Christina, you know, I love scamorza, and I know that this is scamorza, but what the heck does that word mean? <laughs> scamorza comes from the verb scamorzare, and uh, basically it's traditional, almost like, I describe it as like low moisture style mozzarella. Um, it's not a mozzarella because we make it differently, yeah. and it hangs out to age for a little bit of time, mm -hmm. um, and it's a fabulous melting cheese. And these guys here are a perfect traditional example of how they hang to age. Those are cute. Yeah, they're And as adorable. they age, they take on this nice outer color of dark yellow, as opposed to, I see these, which are lighter. So these are drier? Exactly. They feel drier. Exactly. Yeah. The aged ones have a little stronger of flavor, okay? And they hold their shape a lot better. Mm. Uh, the fresher ones are a little more mild. Mm -hmm. um, these are almost, if you will, like baby cacio cavallo, you know, okay. on its way to become sharper, spicier. Right. They're maturing, whereas these are babies. Exactly. So I noticed when you were cutting it, that has a very soft looking texture, and it's perfect for doing a scalmozza alla piastra. Mm, so we're esatto. gonna do it in a frying pan. This is really easy. It's a good old fashioned Southern Italian recipe. My so grandmother excited. always made this for lunch on Saturday along with liver, onions, and cagouts. We all know what those are, right? Okay. <laughs> cagouts, I love So them. what you have to do is you have to heat up some bread first. So here I've got some flat bread. Let's use whole wheat today. Aren't these nice? Beautiful. Beautiful. So I'm going to put it, I've got some olive oil in a pan, and all I want to do is put this in and brown this for a few minutes. Okay. We take these home and cut them like this, but we put them directly on the nonstick pan. Yeah, you can do that too. And that's, and I've never done with anything else yeah. because uh, you have grilled cheese without the bread, take it off, but this adds another layer. That and I know delicious. that the underside of this is ready on this flat bread, so I'm going to turn it over and just get it a little bit more crusty on the underside. So while that's happening, we can put this beautiful scamorza on. Sure. So let's just put it over the top. Oh, like and it's that? really important to use the right cheese. So I liked this cheese oh. as opposed to the drier one because this is going to melt a lot faster. And it's going to be delicious. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. So now all we have to do is wait for that to melt and then we put on the last two ingredients. Okay, it's ooey gooey Looks and it's beautiful. time to take it out. It's wow. just melted enough. And see, that was the perfect cheese for that. So now what we have to do is give it mm. an anointing of vinegar, red wine vinegar, wow. just like that. And some thyme sprinkled mm. over the top. You know, I remember eating this as a kid on Saturdays. Wow. We loved it. And look Smells how simple. Fabulous. Look how simple it is. And we used a few ingredients to just let that cheese shine on itself. Okay. Can't wait to try it. Me either. Day to say formaggio for sure because we learned how to make burrata and scamorza. Thank you, Luca and Christina, for having me. I learned so much from both of you today. Thank, Thank you, you for, for being, being here. here. And until I see you, Nella Cucina, again, I'm Marianne Esposito. And I'm Luca Mignogna from Campobasso, Molise. And I'm Christina Barbieri. Ciao! Ciao.